Hi, today I'll be showing you some of the concepts you need to know to be able to display binary numbers in decimal. These concepts are only necessary if your number is bigger than 9, because it's when you start having multiple decimal digits. If you just want to show a single digit number, you can check out my previous video. Here, as an example, I have an 8-bit binary number that represents 189. To be able to display this number, we actually need to transform this number in its pure digits, so a 1, an 8 and a 9. Here is the binary input that we actually would need to pass to these displays. So the units would be a 9, the decimals would be a 8 and the hundreds would be a 1. This representation of the number is called binary coded decimal. Each decimal digit is represented by its 4-bit binary equivalent. So we can say that this 8-bit binary number is the same thing as this um, BCD. It's 189 in decimal. To make this conversion, we use an algorithm called double-double. To explain you how double-double works, I created this simple table where on the right I have the input, that is the binary number we want to convert, and on the left we have the output, that is the BCD, with the columns for each digit. The algorithm works in a way that we need to repeat two steps until there are no more values on the input column. So let's look at the second rule first. It says, shift all bits one to the left. Let's do that once. So we can see that we grab all the bits from the first row and just shift them by one without changing any of the values. Let's do it again. It's the same thing, we just shift by one. Looking at the first rule now, it says if any digit is bigger or equal than 5, then add 3. So this means we need to look at the output digits and check if the value is 5 or more. So right now only the units digit has any value and it's only 2, so it, done, it doesn't apply yet, we don't add the 3. But if we check the next step, we shift one more time and now the units digit is 5. So we need to add the 3 before shifting. If we do that, this 5 now transforms in an 8, 1, 0, 0, 0. And now when we do the shift, it looks like this. It's 1, 0, 0, 0 from the 8. And then we continue with the previous. So 1, 1, 1, 0, 1 comes from here. 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Now that we understand the two rules of double-double, we just need to repeat these steps until there are no more bits in the input column. So we check if any of the columns have a value of 5 or more, and none of them do right now, so we can just shift by 1. Once again, none of the columns have a value of 5 or more, so we can shift again. But now, the units digit has a value of 7, so now we need to add 3. So the 7 transforms in a 10, 1, 0, 1, 0, and now we can shift. Okay, now we check again. This column has a value of 5 or more, because it's 9, so we need to add 3. So the 9 transforms into 12. And now we do the final shift, because as soon as we do this shift, there are no more bits in the input column, so we are finished. We have the BCD representation, of the value 189. We can check that because in the hundreds we have just one bit on, so it's a 1. Here in the tens we have an 8 and in the units we have a 9. This video took a lot of work, so if you are enjoying it, leave a like. So the next question is how can we use this algorithm in a circuit? Right now, as we just did it, it's very programmatic, with iteration and ifs and shifts, and this is not very easily built in a circuit. So we need to adjust the representation of this algorithm in a way that will simplify our circuit. To do this, I'll adjust this representation, and the first thing I'll do is just hide this intermediary step of adding plus 3. I'm not changing the algorithm, it's exactly the same, just the way we are seeing it. So in the next slides, 
I will show it just like this. The next thing is to move the input from the top to the bottom. Just like this. It's exactly the same data, but I started with the input here on the bottom and each step we go up. Now I'll highlight the places where you need to do this validation if any digit is bigger or equal than 5 at 3. Because in some places we can skip it, for example. Here, because there is only one bit in this column, it's impossible for it to be 5 or more. So we can skip it here. In here, the same, the max is 3. So only when there is at least 3 bits in the column, we need to do this validation. And the same in the tens column. So only when there's 3 bits. So for when there's an 8 bit input, we only need to do this validation 7 times. No less and no more. So now let's look at one of the input bits and try to follow it throughout the algorithm. So the first one on the right, this one, it goes on a diagonal and it actually never changes because it never gets into one of these validations. So the value is always the same. But if we look at this one, for example, it also follows this diagonal, but once it gets here, it starts to enter the, the validations and the value changes and we kind of lose track of it. But we can see that there, there is this pattern of the diagonal. So next step, we'll try to align the input so that these diagonals actually are straight up. And this is how it looks with the input aligned with the output. We can see that the data is exactly the same. If we follow the first bit on the right, we see that it goes every step without going through any validation box as it did before. And this one goes up many steps and then at the end it goes through two. But we can see also that now that the inputs are aligned, what is misaligned is the validation boxes. So instead of being the inputs being shifted, it's the validation boxes that are shifted. But the result is exactly the same. And now we are really close to have a model for our circuit. Because if we think of these inputs with as wires, just like this, and we hide the numbers, we can see that it looks very much like a circuit that we can actually build. There's only one thing we need to fix here, and that this wire is coming out of nowhere. And the simple fix is, if we check all these yellow boxes, they have 4 inputs and 4 outputs. But this one and this one only has 3 inputs and 3 outputs. So if we extend this box to be exactly like the others, it actually, actually fixes it. It still has only 3 inputs, but that's okay, we can assume the fourth is off. And now we have the model we need to be able to build this. To conclude, I'll just show you the layout of the circuit you need to build for different size numbers. Don't forget that the yellow boxes mean that if the input is equal or more than 5, add 3. For a 4-bit number, you just need to use one of these yellow boxes in this way. For an 8-bit number, it's just like I showed you before, with 7 yellow boxes. And for a 16-bit number, it gets a lot more and it's all of these. You can see that the placement of the yellow boxes follows a pattern. So you don't need to know by heart the placement of all the boxes. You just need to follow this pattern. This is where I'll end this one. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And in the next video, I'll be building this in Logic World. So if you don't want to lose that, subscribe.